going to take a really quick 15 or a few minutes for Q&A. Um, if anybody does have some questions, let me know. Um, Carlisle is also here. Um, Gloria? Okay, um, so if, uh, if a person purchased a reserved housing unit and they are not able to fulfill their owner occupant requirements because they're moving off island, uh, which they made known to the project broker two years ago, but they wouldn't do anything about it, how do we go about the process of you buying it back? So, so that's happened. It's happening. Um, the first part is that notification that this is happening, um, you know, what do I do? We would then say HCDA is going to exercise its option to buy back. And depending on where that project is located, that kind of dictates how it's bought back. Uh, we have a great sister agency partnership with HHFDC to purchase back units in Rycroft Terrace. So we have purchased back, I think, two or three units so far um, because of just that. People who can no longer stay there uh, for various reasons and they you know, need to move off island before the 10 year term is up. Okay, so can I email you? Sure, yeah. Uh, what you would do is you would send that letter to so the owner saying, you know, I need to not live in my unit anymore. Please proceed with the buyback. That can go to either me or to our general email through our website. We just need that to start the process. For the units that you uh, purchase back, are those then made available for sale through your website only or through the MLS, through Realtor Partners? How, how is that made available to the public? So for the HHFDC units, we have a broker who handles all the resales of the units that we repurchase. I believe that they have a website. Um, I believe there's also a link on our website to their website, and they do provide the application forms um, that are required to start that process. Right. Okay. I'm sorry, so was your question with regard to within the 10 year term or outside the 10 year term? Within the 10 year term, okay, yes. So within the 10 year term, so let me just clarify. Within the 10 year term, the agencies have the buy that option, first right of refusal. If we repurchase a unit, then yes, we will have our resale broker sell the property on our behalf to an affordable buyer based on restrictions. If it's if we don't repurchase or don't exercise our option, the owner is allowed to resell their unit based on the HHFDC repurchase price. And that has happened. And that has happened. So for you guys, if this happens, then you would then have the opportunity to be the listing broker. That's happened to you before. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. You have to call all the guys. Yes. So we would provide the owner with all of the requirements to resell their property, um, and then they would just inform us that that's happening. Why would HHFTC not want to exercise that? It just depends on the repurchase price. It's a various factors. Finance, you know, we, we need to make sure that it's feasibly um, beneficial for us to do so. Um, and let me just clarify on, on that point that after the 10 year period is over, then owner is allowed to resell the property unrestricted for whatever the market will support. But I, I think in both situations, the SAE is due and payable to the agency. And after the 10 years, you have to, you still have the purpose, you have to live in the unit, right? Own occupancy. For the 10 year period. But after the 10 years, Correct. Yeah. So after the ten years, we're not involved. They can do whatever they want. They can rent it. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. I had a question. If a woman acquires an affordable housing unit, she is within the ten-year term. She gets married to a guy who owns property. Is he allowed to live with her in the affordable unit, or does she have to sell the unit under the 10-year term? So from HCDA, um, we've had similar kind of situations where if that person, husband, uh, whatnot, wants to be on title, 
that's a change in title. That would trigger the buyback by HCDA. Um, so he could live there not as, a, as an owner, you know, and we wouldn't have any say as long as the woman lived there too as the owner occupant. But once he wants to be on title, that's where you get the change of title issue. So it's a, it's a choice, you know, for them. So in response to your question, as far as our program is concerned, the, the husband can live in the unit and like, like Lindsay's program, if they want to be on title, if he wants to be on title, then that's when it requires our, it doesn't require income but per se, but it does require our approval. They have to be a qualified resident within that 10 year period. So during the 10 year period, they have to be a qualified resident. But of course, like Lindsay said, you know, they can occupy without being penalized, yes. Uh, I have a question because a lot of people ask me, after 10 years later, if they sell their property, but how about the value between the market value, like uh, if they only purge for half a million, but the market value when, the, when that kind of purge is 700, does it mean the government sponsor for 200,000, then, after they die or transfer to their children or they sell at 10 years, do they have to pay back that 200000 So under HCDA's program, until that shared equity is paid, it remains a regulated unit. So yes, whoever owns that unit, um, laws of device are, are kind of a little complicated, but just speaking on a, on a basic level, um, upon that first sale, you are expected, you need to pay that shared equity. So the shared equity has a few different calculations depending on the rules you follow, but that calculation you just mentioned is one of them um, on a very basic level again, uh, which is the original fair market value minus the sales price. Um, but yes, yes. If they make any profit, is they have to uh, uh, share with the the government or? So the profit, so whatever they sell at, you know, we don't really care so much about that number. We just care that we get the shared equity, which is a which is a predetermined amount. So once we get that, you know, they would get whatever proceeds are there beyond that number, but we would need that shared equity amount. Um, there are provisions in our rule that say take into account if the market crashes, for example, and they can't sell for the amount um, that would allow them to pay back that full number. So there are certain um, calculations that would assist with that, but on a very basic level, yes, they would owe us that, that difference. Or well, if the, the market crash, uh, they didn't sell 700, that if they only sell 600, so they still have to pay back 200? No, so, so that's where the individual calculation would would come in. So depending on if they're the 2005 <laughs> rules, 2011, or 2018, there's different calculations that account for that. We don't want to penalize the buyer just for something like 2008 happening. Um, so there are certain stipulations that would kick in um, in those cases. But do refer back to our rules because, again, those calculations are very specific to the project. 